This is BBC Newsline, the headlines this Thursday evening. The families of the 10 people killed in the Ballamurphy shootings receive a letter of apology from the Prime Minister. He says he's truly sorry for what happened and what the relatives had to go through. It came as the Secretary of State also made this statement to Parliament. The government profoundly regrets and is truly sorry for these events and how investigations after these terrible events were handled. But that statement and Boris Johnson's letter only caused further anger among the family. It's a disgrace for a scrap of paper. See if you apologise to somebody, you go to their face and say, I'm sorry for what I've done. The great reopening continues. Indoor hospitality will be allowed from the 24th of May. Theatres should be able to reopen on the 21st of June. That's good news. But on the other hand, there are lots of unanswered questions that we need to have answers to before we know when we're actually going to be able to start selling tickets. A warning to young people and... Hello and welcome to the programme. First tonight, the government has said it is truly sorry for the events surrounding Bala Murphy 50 years ago, in which 10 innocent people were killed. Speaking in the House of Commons earlier today, the Secretary of State, Brandon Lewis, also said the Prime Minister had written to the families to express his regrets, but they have rejected the apology. Some political parties have called on Boris Johnson to meet the families in person. Here's our political reporter, Jim McCormick. The government's acknowledgement of the terrible hurt that has been caused to the families it should have been a meaningful moment, an official acknowledgement from Downing Street to the Bala Murphy families and their decades-long struggle for truth. The government profoundly regrets and is truly sorry for these events and how investigations after these terrible events were handled and for the additional pain that the families have had to endure in their fight to clear the names of their loved ones since they began their campaign almost five decades ago. But for Breege Boyle and John Taggart, it only brought more hurt, not healing. It just bothered me to be honest with you. I, I'm sorry, I feel very upset because I just feel that 50 years we have waited for this day and for them as again to treat us like class, second class citizens, that only for the press to keep us informed of what was going on. That's how I found out that there was supposed to be an apology. Why could Boris not do it? Why could he not? Nothing. Personally, for me, it won't make any difference. It won't bring my money back. But at the same time, at least you would have felt that you were being respected, or she was being respected. There was no responsibility, uh, and that's the interview for it. Uh, there was some empty words of the way forward to dealing with victims, but we've heard it all before. Some MPs listening to Brandon Lewis were equally unimpressed that the person saying sorry wasn't the Prime Minister. Will the Secretary of State ask the Prime Minister to come out of hiding, come with me, meet the Bala Murphy families and tell them to their faces why he wants to protect their killers? Will he take responsibility as Prime Minister and show the victims the respect they so obviously deserve? Victims, Mr Speaker, like those who lost loved ones at Bally Murphy, have been let down for far too long. This was the letter sent from Boris Johnson to the families, apologising again. But some feel the government's words just aren't matching its actions, with concern growing over plans to place a ban on all troubles prosecutions. Will the Secretary of State ensure that whether it is innocent victims in Bally Murphy shortly afterwards, or for example the Claudie bomb carried out by the IRA in 1972 in my constituency, about which they've received no closure, no justice and no apology, do, do not suffer the ignominy of hearing about an amnesty in the next few months. And that's why I think it is important as the state that we take uh, accountability as we are doing for what happened with the Valley Murphy case. Others, obviously, I, I believe should do the same uh, where there's relevance for them and where there is actions taken by them. But it is important that we get to the heart of, of what happens so people can have that understanding, that accountability and truth. For the Valley Murphy families and others seeking justice, the wait goes on to see what the government does next. Jane McCormack, BBC Newsline. Well, the day began with the Secretary of State's apology. At around the same time, the Prime Minister's letter arrived with the solicitor representing the Ballamurphy families. Catherine Morrison has the story. 
not worth the paper it was written on. The Ballamurphy family's verdict on the Prime Minister's letter. Their solicitor started to read it. Without the Ballamurphys, it never happened. We never had the experience such grief and loss. He became too emotional to continue. This has been a cat hand of a throat to have had a day to these families. It's been a very emotional few days for the families. And this response has been disgraceful. How he's done it, the timing of it, the language of it. These families have asked for justice. They don't seek a half-hearted apology. For 50 years, through our lives, we have had to go through this here. I, I, I see our parents die. see our, all our family members die. It's a disgrace for a scrap of paper. See if you apologise to somebody, you go to their face and say, I'm sorry for what I've done. Sinn Féin President Mary Lee MacDonald met the families this afternoon. She said the Prime Minister had not apologised yesterday during a phone call with Michelle O'Neill and Arlene Foster, as had been claimed. She also said Boris Johnson should now meet the families. I believe the respectful thing is not to write them a letter through their solicitor or to offer them up a, a half-baked second-hand apology. I believe the dignified thing is to recognise these families, meet with these families, and to provide a fulsome public apology. But would the families meet the Prime Minister? Some say they would. Of course we would be prepared. I mean, I think it would be good to sit down and just let, let, let's see, uh, we need to come, uh, we've come in, uh, it needs to be common sincere and clearing up the mess that he's already made. Others, like Carmel Quinn, whose brother John Laverty was shot dead by British soldiers here on the White Rock Road, say not until the government changes its direction on legacy issues. Until Boris Johnson takes honesty off the table, until he implements the Good, the Good Friday Agreement and also the Stormont Case Agreement, they were agreements met by the governments. If that gets implemented and there's no threat of honesty to the families, then maybe we will somewhere down the line. But at the moment, we want accountability and we want justice for my brother. It's been another long day for the Ballamurphy families. Catherine Morrison, BBC Newsline, West Belfast.